Today I'm going to teach you how to make all the components and put together the sweet pork burrito from Cafe Rio. This copycat recipe is incredible, mouthwatering deliciousness, one of our family favorites. Now if you love copycat recipes, don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss anything, and let's get started. The first component of these burritos that we're going to start with is the pork because it takes the longest to cook. Now you want to look for pork shoulder or pork butt. Now, even though it's called pork butt, it's still the shoulder. <laughs> it can be a little bit confusing. They call it different things depending on where you live. Now, this piece of meat has a lot of tendons running through it, so this slow cooking is what's best for it. So whether you're using a slow cooker or a smoker, we're gonna go low and slow and cook for a long time, and those tendons are just gonna melt away and it's just going to become this just delicious pull apart pork. Now, if you can find a bone-in one, I recommend it because it will hold this whole big piece of meat together easier and uh, you'll have a more moist meat where when you have a bone out, like the one that I find at Costco, you have these thinner sections of meat that will cook a little faster while this will take a little longer. So I like to keep the whole thing together, but I will add seasoning to the inside here. Now, everything I learned about smoking meat, I learned from Hey Grill Hey. She has a YouTube channel and a blog. I highly recommend her. Uh, I'm using her sweet rub uh, as part of this, but I add a couple extra ingredients. I add some cumin and some chili powder, so let's make that rub first. Dark brown sugar. You can use normal brown sugar if you like. I just prefer the dark brown sugar for the depth of flavor that it brings. Then we're gonna add coarse sea salt and black pepper. Smoked paprika, garlic powder, onion powder, cumin, chili powder, ground mustard, and finally some cayenne pepper. And give that a stir. Now the next choice that you can make is to mustard or not to mustard your pork butt. Now I'm gonna do both today, mustard on one side, nothing on the other side other than the rub, so you can see the difference. What the mustard does is it actually isn't about flavor, because I'm not really a fan of mustard, but I don't even notice the mustard flavored in this final result. What it does is it helps give you a nice crisp outer outside, and some people really love those crispy bits, and some people don't. So I'm gonna show you what that both looks like. And we're just gonna slather this on, and then rub it in. And we're gonna do our non-mustard side now. Don't forget to add the rub to the inside if you're doing a boneless pork shoulder. Make sure you're getting this rub in every nook and cranny. This is a seven pound pork butt and you wanna count on about two hours of cook time for every pound of meat. So seven pounds, 14 hours. I want this to be done around four o'clock in the afternoon. So of course that means I need to start it at about two o'clock in the morning. Now it might be done sooner than that and that's just fine. I'll talk about that later. Uh, but just in case it takes the full amount of time, you wanna consider that. So I obviously can't show you putting in the smoker tonight because it's dark. <laughs> Uh, but you want to preheat your smoker to 225 degrees. Uh, it took about 45 minutes to an hour for mine to heat up, but it depends on the time of year as well. So you want to make sure that's completely preheated before you add your meat. Now add your meat directly to the grill of your smoker and don't forget to use a really good meat thermometer. This is where it gets a little bit fun and a little bit tricky. Uh, the meat will actually heat up to about 145 degrees fairly quickly, but then it's gonna hit what smokers call the stall, and it's gonna take a lot longer to go from 145 to 165. So uh, I get up and check mine after about three hours, and then I check it every hour after that until it hits 165. At that point, we're gonna bring the pork out and we're gonna wrap it in pink butcher paper. Now if you only have 18 inch wide butcher paper, go ahead and cut two pieces and overlap them. Add the pork to the butcher paper and wrap it up completely, tucking in the ends. Now we're gonna put this back in the smoker and cook it until it hits 195, or if you want it to be even more fall aparty and moist, I recommend heating it up to 201. Now while the meat is still in the smoker in its final heating up, we're going to make a couple other components for this dish that can be prepared ahead of time. First up, the green enchilada tomatillo sauce. This is what tomatillos look like at the grocery store. They have this outer wrapping. You wanna look for the ones that have burst through and you wanna make sure that you peel this off. Now, this is a little bit sticky afterwards, so make sure you give it a wash. Also make sure you wash your hands. That sticking coating, if you touch your face, can actually burn, so. 
We're gonna take our tomatillos and put them in the blender. We're gonna take a jalapeno and a green onion and put that in as well. Add the chicken broth and blend. Add a bunch of cilantro and mix again. Now we're gonna heat up some oil in a pan, add some onions and some garlic, and we're gonna saute that. Once the onions are translucent, go ahead and add everything from the blender. Also gonna add a tablespoon sugar, a teaspoon cumin, salt, and pepper and bring that to a boil. And then simmer that for 15 minutes. Now you can serve this warm or cold, uh, so you can actually make it the day before, so you have less to do the day of. Now at homemade pico de gallo is super easy to make. We're just gonna chop some tomatoes, uh, mince some jalapenos, some onion, cilantro, dice some garlic, use some fresh lime juice, then just stir everything up. And then add salt a little at a time, constantly tasting it to see if you're happy with it. Now everything else I make large amounts of so we can have leftovers. Pico de gallo is the one thing that I make in small batches because I prefer it fresh. Now I'm gonna make my creamy jalapeno dip. This isn't really authentic to Cafe Rio, but it is a family favorite and we always include it when we create our burrito bars. Start by adding the mayo to the food processor along with dry ranch dressing dip and some milk. And blend. Basically you're making ranch dressing, but if you use pre-made ranch dressing, like out of the bottle, I've tried it and it just does not taste right. So that's why I recommend always going with the powder. Now we're gonna add some sour cream, green chilies, Salt, garlic powder, lime juice, and cilantro. And blend. And the final ingredient is the pickled jalapenos. Now add this to taste knowing that the longer it sits in the fridge, the hotter it's going to get. I usually start decently hot and then enjoy it as it gets super hot over the next couple of days. And now blend again. I just taste test it with a chip. I'll often just add a little extra cilantro and sometimes just a little bit more of a lime juice as well. It's great to totally personalize this, make it however you like it. This can also be made a day ahead of time and left in the fridge till you're ready to serve. So our thermometer just went off and the meat is done. One other thing you want to prep before that happens is get yourself a cooler and a grubby towel. What we're going to do is put the meat wrapped in the towel inside the cooler for a minimum of one hour and that's gonna help the meat rest and make it even easier to pull apart. Uh, you can leave it in there for longer though so if your meat cook time doesn't take the 14 hours you expected it to take and it's done early you can wrap in the towel put it in the cooler and it'll insulate it and keep it warm until you're ready to eat. Now during that hour that the pork is rusting, we're gonna make our rice and our beans. We're gonna start with our rice because the rice cooker takes a little bit more time than the Instapot, which is what we're using for our beans. So you wanna start your rice cooker to turn it on and we're gonna add our butter and our garlic and that's gonna heat up and saute. It should take about 10 minutes for that butter to melt completely and the garlic to start to be fragrant. Now we're gonna add our rice that I've rinsed and drained and stir that together and add the chicken stock and stir it together. Go ahead and cancel and start again. After the rice finishes cooking, let it sit for about 10 minutes before you open it. Now we're gonna add the sugar, cilantro, and lime juice. And fluff the rice, stir in. And we're gonna make black beans in the Instant Pot. Start by clicking saute, add some oil, 
onions, and some garlic. And saute until the onions are translucent. Then add some cumin, some coriander, some salt, and some pepper. Stir that together. Now add about half a cup of our broth, and we're gonna deglaze the pan. What that's doing is adding just a little bit of liquid to the hot pan, and it will sizzle and help you stir and scrape up anything cooked to the bottom of the pan. You wanna do this anytime you're using the saute function before cooking in the Instapot. I also really recommend the nonstick liner for any recipe where you're using the saute function first. So instead of having little bits of garlic and onion cooked on the bottom of the pan, it should be completely smooth before we uh, actually start the Instapot and then you'll avoid the burn notification. Now we're adding our dried black beans, green chilies, bay leaf, and the rest of the broth. We're gonna add the lid. Make sure you hit cancel to stop the saute. Then we're gonna pressure cook this on high for 35 minutes. Once the beans have natural released, go ahead and open them. Give it a stir and take out that bay leaf. Add fresh cilantro and squeeze two limes into the mixture and give it its final stir. I'm just about to open up the pork and shred it, but before I do, I'm gonna get the sauce ready to go that we're going to add to it. So this is the same sauce that I would use for the slow cooker pork as well. Dark brown sugar again, cumin, chili powder, enchilada sauce, green chilies, garlic, salt, and Dr. Pepper or Coke if you prefer. And stir. Now open this up. Ugh. It is already just falling apart just as I pick it up. Now comes the fun part. We're gonna tear it apart. Now you can use forks or I have these meat claws. They are awesome. After you break everything up with the claws, areas start to cool down enough that you can get in there with your hands and break it up just a little bit smaller. Also, your hands are really the best way to be on the lookout for any pockets of fat or gristle. You just wanna take those out and put them off to the side and then toss them. But be careful, it is still really hot. And over here, this is the side that had the mustard on it. And it's hard to tell just by looking at it, but it is a much crunchier, uh, not skin, but it is a crunchier outer shell, where this is the side that just had the herbs and it just breaks apart and a little easier and is a little bit softer. So again, that's just a personal preference on mustard or not mustard. And now add that sweet sauce over the top and mix it in. Start with a tortilla, add some rice, add some beans, add some of the pork, add a little sauce. Now we're gonna wrap it up. I might have put a little bit too much in here. I tend to do that. Whoop. Add some lettuce on the side with some of the fresh pico. A little more enchilada sauce across the top. And then my favorite, the creamy jalapeno dip. And you're ready to go. You have all the layers, the rice, the beans, the meat, sauce, deliciousness. Now, none of these components in and of themselves are very hard to do. They're all incredibly simple. Obviously making them all in one day is a little bit time consuming, but oh, so worth it. And the best part is none of them overlap. While the pork is cooking, you can make your sauces. While the pork is resting, you start the rice. While the rice is cooking, you make the beans and everything is done at the same time and wonderfully delicious. And the best part is, 
The whole family can put together their burritos all by themselves, adding whatever they do and don't like into theirs so you don't have to stand around and completely put all of these together. They can do it themselves. It's great. Just lay everything out on the table. That's what I do. This is a family favorite when we have a large crowd or a gathering because it's so easy for people to make their own and it's so incredibly delicious. Now in the comments down below, I would love to hear if there's another restaurant you would like to see me make a copycat res recipe from. Uh, don't forget if you take make any of these and you share them on social media, tag me and I will share them in my Instagram stories. Now for my favorite part, I get to eat some. Mm. So delicious. These flavors melt together and come together so well the pork just melts in your mouth now i'm gonna call my family together to eat while you enjoy the next video